Hi, welcome back to the Serpent's Cave. Wanted to give you a little update on Duncan, like I said I would. Duncan had a full body infection. Uh, we had to be injecting him for five straight days with, I guess it's an antibiotic. Batril. Batril. And the way they found out that he had the full body infection was one, they took a, a culture swab, but two, the bottom of his belly right here was all pink 100 percent pink i mean it was there was no color and now the color's coming back he's active he's real he's real move about me he likes to move now i have a question for those people who know about uh, african side neck turtles this one looks totally different than the actual other one we have and he can do some things the other one can't do. If you look at his shell, it's a little bit more raised and not as flat as the other one. <clears throat> this shell part right here, watch. He can close it up. And he can close it up all the way shut. Now the other one, other turtle can't do that. So I'm wondering, you know, is this a different species of side neck because we got these from Petco and they claim they were a male and female and actually I think they're actually both female. We thought they were male at first but after studying them along it looks like they're both female. So we have a female named Duncan possibly. Uh, and claim they're both African side necks but I've never seen like ours can't shut this up so tight you can't get into it. Or other one. So I'm just wondering what you think, guys. If you have any ideas of what, you know, if, if this is an African side neck and it's normal for it, kind of give me an idea of what you think. Watch. See, now if I really probe, he'll really pull it up in there and he'll pull it shut all the way. It won't come out. You can't get it open. So, anyway, that's Duncan. He's doing better. Got the shots going on. And to show you the other one real quick, so we can kind of get it. A view of him. Let me get it out. Okay, ooh, trying to bite me. Okay, this African side neck, if you look at it, see, shell's different, looks totally different. It doesn't have the flexibility across here at all to do that pull up stuff. It can't trap. I don't know if it's because it's a younger one or what. But, you know, this is our other one. Doesn't look, I mean, I might, it might be because it's younger. I don't know. It just doesn't look the same. See how nice those colors on here? There's no pink. Well, Duncan's getting his back. Elmer, this is Elmer. He's healthy as heck. Or she. Or she, yeah. Someone give us an idea. We'll figure it out. Yeah, they like to go run and hide. They're not very friendly yet. I uh, don't understand what the deal is. They're just shy. Okay, today I want to touch on a, a subject that's very, very important. Um, a lot of people in the reptile world never really mention it. But... Uh, since my wife is pregnant and doing a surrogacy for a couple from Sweden, we looked into the health and welfare of the baby and we found that uh, salmonella can be easily transmitted from reptiles to humans. With that said, I don't want to seem like I'm belittling the importance of it, but I'm going to explain to you some things that I learned and how to prevent this from happening 100% of the time. First of all, salmonella is a, is a bacterial infection that is transmitted from ingestion. Now, it doesn't mean you have to swallow it. It means if I touch something that has bacteria, the bacteria of salmonella on it, and I touch like the corner of my eye where there's moisture, uh, my mouth, uh, if I touch any place, like there's a debate, 
if I touch an open wound uh, with that, uh, that it can be transmitted. With that being said, the proof is that 90% of the cases of salmonella poisoning today, which is a food poisoning by the way, a form of food poisoning, is, uh, is because of improper care, handling, processing of food and sanitation of areas where food is processed. Uh, improperly cooked food, raw food, uh, you know, is a big salmonella, especially in poultry, because poultry has it really bad. Um, improper sanitizing the area after you're done cooking. Uh, Cross-contamination of meats with vegetables and, and other, sometimes even other meats, can cause salmonella. So, the biggest cause, as we know, of salmonella uh, poisoning is through human contact with food and improper handling of food. But it is also a fact that there has been cases of salmonella from reptiles. Now, we have talked with experts in this field and did lots of study. One of the main things that all these experts, that's veterinarians, reptile handlers who handled reptiles for years and years and years, and human doctors are sanitation, sanitation, sanitation. You know, make sure that everything's sanitized. Uh, it can harm and kill a fetus. It can harm humans and elderly and young people can die from salmonella. Don't let this scare you into having reptiles. I mean, there are there's people I've talked to that's had four kids, uh, had reptiles all their life while they've had the four kids and never had any incidences. So there's also a debate on how easy it is truly to catch from reptiles. Uh, but I don't gamble. I like to do things as, as you know, close to right as I can. So that's why I put this out. Always sanitize your hands before because you don't want to give your reptile something and after handling your reptile. Uh, if you can and you wish to, and I do a lot, wear rubber gloves if you're, you know, like giving him shots, uh, doing anything having to do with uh, cleaning the cages, things like that, I clean. I, I always wear gloves. After handling them, I always wash my hands with antibacterial soap, warm water, take care of it. In the area where the turtle's at, or has been, like when you saw a while ago when the turtle dropped water on the floor, well, I will sanitize that with a bleach, Clorox bleach wash. I'll do that same thing with any place that turtle has been. Don't feed your snakes or reptiles in the area where you process food. Wherever you process food at is not the place to do it. If you do, because that's the only area you have, sanitize with Clorox bleach wipes or water. If a uh, pregnant woman wants to handle a reptile, I was given this advice by both a veterinarian and a doctor. Elbow length rubber gloves, lab coat, keep the reptile away from the face and the neck. Do not touch your face, do not touch your lips, do not touch your eyes, do not blow your nose or anything while you're handling these reptiles until you thoroughly sanitize yourself. I want to really put this out there because there are some misnomers and fears causing people not to want to get reptiles and not to want to have kids around reptiles. One person says, ah, you shouldn't have a pregnant woman or young kids even in a house around reptiles. And they have a legitimate reason to say that because they don't understand sanitary concepts. Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Right? That's all you have to do. Clean, clean, clean. And you'll be fine. Uh, I hope that helps out a little bit. I hope you uh, enjoyed what little bit we had today and then good news on Duncan. And remember, if someone has anything about that turtle, is it a true African side neck? Is it just older than the other one? That's why it can do that thing with its shell. Or is it a different species of side neck? Someone out there, if you know, let me know. I'd appreciate it. Just put down in the comment below anything you have to say about what we talked about today. Until another one, y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.